I'll swab two just to show you we're not, we're not going to be positive for COVID-19. And then after the five days came back and we were positive for COVID-19, I'm like, damn, man, I cannot believe this. You know, first thing is, is, you know, we live with my dad. Um, you know, my dad's retired. We retired my dad. He lives with me. I take care of him fully. I've done for years. Uh, and at that point, I'm really, really, really worried about him. I'm worried about our 11-year-old son because, you know, me and her are pretty young. I'm like, we'll probably get through this all right. But my dad's high risk. He, you know, he's in, you know, kidney failure, uh, cardiovascular disease. Uh, you know, Diabetes. So he's got all these different things. Underlying mm. health risk, higher and age. And he's went out of his way. Right. To like quarantine, to quarantine, bunker stay down. Home not go anywhere yeah. so like you know how terrible would it be that we bring home COVID 19 right. to someone that went out of their way to not get it so the next thing was we we're like listen we're positive we need to isolate immediately that's so the right thing to that's do. that's the right thing to do don't be going to work don't be going out don't be playing around even if you're asymptomatic like me it doesn't matter right i want to do the right thing but the next thing was we're like we got to swap our son and my dad so we swab them both, right? We wait for the results to come back in four or five days later. And you know what? Couldn't my, believe it. My dad's negative. My son is positive. <clears throat> and they're in the house where we've been isolated for five days. What do we do? <laughs> Rush home. We grab our son, take our son out. <clears throat> it's been five days since then. So we want to swab my dad again just to make sure. Let a couple of days go by. I've been asking him, hey, you're symptomatic. Do you have any symptoms or anything like that? No, I feel all right. Swabbed him for the second time. He got another negative. We were isolated, thank God, and he didn't catch COVID-19 <gasps> from us because I would have felt real bad or it could have been terminal for him. So it was really, really big. So we're isolated. We've been in this isolation for almost two weeks. Sharice is just starting to get over COVID-19. You know, at that point, we're through our isolation period. And, you know, she's got all this other, you know, things that are happening to her. Swelling of her legs. Still not breathing correctly because of the patches in her lungs from the pneumonia. You know, after COVID-19 is gone, it really might not be gone, the effects. Because it can leave scarring in the lungs. Like, she might have because of these patches and pneumonia. It could cause a swelling or this cytostorm, which is inflammation in the body. The guys, I'm telling you. Which causes a whole bunch of different things. And this is where organs start shutting down and all these different things start happening negatively. All right, so we have been through the ringer of COVID-19. And like I said, I'm asymptomatic. She got hit the hardest. Our son pretty much, he, he didn't have any symptoms. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he did pretty well with COVID-19. So, I mean, yeah, the younger guys might do well. We don't know if they can spread it. We do know asymptomatic people, I don't care what they say, can probably spread it. Like micro spit or if I sneeze, because I, I mean, I sneezed, you know, at that point, like you can still spread it that way. Um, so we want to present the facts to you guys about what has really went on and what we've actually used too. So obviously having tight medical center, we have a ton of different therapies that we offer, especially for immune support and immune system boosting. You know, thymosin alpha one, we all got on thymosin alpha one, which has, you know, increase, increases t, t cells in the body, which track down viral and bacterial cells in the body and try to eradicate them and, and get healthy cells back in there. Glutathione, super antioxidants. We know that Vitamin C and zinc are used in the hospitals too as well because when Teresa's in there, when they, when they released it with their paperwork, it started saying take zinc. They gave it to me in the hospital. So at that point, IVs, you know, rehydrating, making sure you're hydrated because you don't want to go through dehydration too as well through this. And that happens and that's happened a lot. Um, you know, with, with Sharice, because of these different issues, lactic acidosis, that means that your body is producing so much acid and it cannot get rid of this acid um, naturally. So you have to do stuff for that, which is more water, more hydration. <coughs> Um, it's it's been a it's been a definitely a journey a negative journey. I'm definitely lucky that uh, that I have been asymptomatic to take care of her. I don't know um, what I would have done. And my him. son, because if I was bedridden just like her, I mean, we would probably be in a, we'd probably be in a, a bad circumstance, you know. So at Too that bad. point, I, you know, I'm blessed <clears throat> for that. I hope you know God blesses her and she's through this very soon because um, she's still not over it. So at that point, she's still going through the ringer of this different things. And she was in the ICU. Uh, they pumped her full of tons of IV antibiotics, um, hydrating her, taking her blood every couple hours, poking her in the middle of the night. Well, you know, I ended up like with that. sepsis because of whatever happened beforehand. I don't know if it was the bladder infection. What I think happened is just it just went like a boom, 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 boom. It was like a domino effect. You know, I had this bladder infection that was resistant to antibiotics. They put me on antibiotics, these like heavy duty antibiotics. And then I came in contact, obviously, with somebody that had COVID-19 
COVID-19 and pneumonia took over at that point. And now I'm trying to fight the sepsis and the pneumonia that's still there. And you know what? I'll like, I'm going to show you guys like, cause I'm telling you guys, this is serious, you know? And like, you know, I still have swelling in my stomach. This is my stomach right now. You and know? Anybody knows that Sharice, Sharice is very, I'm, very flat you know, stomached and very This is not, this is not fun. You so, know, it's not, it's not fun. You know, my legs are still swollen um you know it's hard for me to breathe and you know it doesn't feel good i've i i these random symptoms of like waking up in the middle of the night and just having these charlie horses in my legs and literally like crying because i'm in so much pain and I, there's nothing i can do like i i they and they don't know what that like what to do so like I'm sitting in a hospital bed and the doctors are coming in and I think they feel so bad about not having like an answer for you about COVID and what's going to happen to you, you know, because they don't have those answers. They're I'm like, you know, uh, they're flying by the seat of their pants. They, they're and they say it. Too. They really are. They, they're they're, being, they understand I mean, that, they're right? being honest about it. But like when you're in the medical field, you know, you don't want to tell somebody I don't know. And they have to tell me that. They came in and they're like, I don't know. You know, I don't know what's causing what. And I don't know how long these symptoms are going to last. And, you know, I'm asking them because I don't like getting shooting pains up into my eyes. Like, I'm still getting it. You know, they have me on medication right now just so that my eyes will stay focused. And I don't get these little zings in my eyes where my eyes like shake like this. Almost, yeah. You know, it's like, it's scary because what? Well, you can't see, you know, so yeah. I'm still at the point where, you know, I can't even like lay flat because I can't breathe. It's, it's like, yeah. it's scary. It's it's a scary thing. And I feel like for a long time, people are just saying, you know, it's just a flu. It's just this. It's just that. But until like, I guess I, I mean, I got to be the super lucky one to go through it and I'm still going through it. And I'm hoping that I can get better because I feel like every day is just kind of like a stagnant day for me so you know it it sucks and then on top of all of that guys now you have like these covid units of when you get admitted to the hospital right so when you go to the hospital like for instance i've been to the hospital a million times with john and it's usually for my endometriosis and i have to make sure that i watch it very closely because god forbid something blows up in there and boom i have ovary blow up and then oh now I'm, you know, in emergency surgery, surgery for hysterectomy which I don't that, want, yeah. you know, so I've been in the hospital, but he's always been by my side. I've never been in a hospital by myself, but in these COVID units, they don't allow anybody in there. Oh no. No like, matter no, what, you're not allowed in the hospital. No. You're not allowed in the ER. No. You're not allowed to stay in the ER. No. It doesn't matter if you have COVID or not, <clears throat> you're out. No. If they do find out you had COVID, they're going to treat you a little bit different. Like, like this almost like. Oh, no, you're... I'll tell you. So like, you know, I, I don't, I, I, it took me, it took me 20 days to go to the emergency room. And the only reason I went to the emergency room is because I woke up at 5 a.m. and I couldn't move my legs. And I told her she's going. That's I couldn't move my legs. I, I couldn't, I couldn't feel my feet because my feet were numb. So if I can't move my legs and my feet are numb, I probably should go to the ER. Okay. So I, I caved, went to the ER. It's not where I wanted to go. And literally, when I went in there to sign the paper, sign the paper, like, oh, you're going to sign in? And it's like, okay, so you can leave. And I'm like, <clears throat> what do you mean? I'm like, he has to come in there with me. Like, no. I'm like, what do you mean? I have to go in there by myself? Like, what do you, by myself, like now? It's the scariest thing. So not only am I sick and I'm by myself and I have to be like, you know, I'm not even with the program because I'm so sick that I don't even like know what people are even telling me at this point. It's it's like the scariest thing. Like being by yourself, you don't even know what's going to happen next. You don't know what's going to happen to you in the hospital. You don't know what's going on. You have no support there, you know, except for the people that are in there. And I mean, I thank God that I had a really 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 good team at Advent and I'm going to give them a shout out, you know, cuz they took really good care of me, but it's not the point. Like still by yourself. And then after that, they admit me to ICU on the floor with COVID unit, okay? And they like, you know, they put you in this room and it's like this aired out room, you know, it sounds like man. there's a hurricane. 
the whole time. Fresh air vent mm. through there. It's crazy. And, uh, you know, you're by yourself, <clears throat> which is fun. And, um, you know, when they come in there, it's like I had the one doctor come in there and I'm in my own room, right? Because I'm like I'm in a hospital bed hooked up. I have like three IVs in one arm because they're pumping me with antibiotics at this point because of the sepsis or whatever it is. And, um, you know, they just they come in there. He's like, where's your mask? I'm like, it's literally sitting on the bed like next to me. I'm like right here. And he's like, well, put it on. I'm like. Okay, well, hold up. <laughs> Wait a second. I'm like, I'm in my own hospital bed. Like, like I will happily put on my mask. Like, I don't want to get nobody sick. I don't want anybody else to get sick. I don't want anybody to go through what I have been through. Like, I think some of, some people out there think either A, it's a joke. B, it's political. C, it's made up. D, it's a, another influenza. Let me tell you something, Okay. I have had pneumonia. It ain't pneumonia. I have had the flu. It ain't the flu. This is like some off the wall. You don't know what's going to happen. It's hit or miss. If it hits you, hey, you might just be that guy like John. Walk around. Just have no symptoms. Everything's fine. Totally cool. But you're spreading it around town. Okay? That's your person number one. Person number two, you get sick. Get sick for a couple days. Oh, boo-hoo, have some diarrhea. You might have a headache for two, three days. You get over kind of it. Cough, you're little way. little tiny cough here or there. No medications needed, nothing, whatever. Oh, then you got patient number three. That's the unlucky one like me. I'm going on dexamethasone. I went on hydroxychloroquine. I took it. I didn't care. I, at that point, what what... What did I have to lose at that point? You really want to check with your medical provider on this? <laughs> you know? A lot of primary cares and, 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 and what your, did I have to lose? I took it. Trial, I yeah. took it. I took I took the I took the Z pack. I took the hydroxychloroquine. I had to take the dexamethasone because if I didn't take the dexamethasone, and that is like a pretty serious drug because coming off of it was not nice. But I mean, if I didn't take it, then you have to control the inflammation. Like that's the key to this whole thing is yeah, the inflammation. inflammation. And the inflammation is bad and it gets and it's everywhere. It's in your in your scalp. I mean, I had fluid everywhere. that I could move in my scalp around in my scalp. It is like the scariest thing I've ever been through in my whole life. And we got to remember, guys, now COVID-19 also attacks the nervous system, the central nervous system. I was having involuntary movements so of my hands. Not just that. And feet. With the vision as one like she's talking about. <clears throat> people are losing their sense of smell.